Not my house. It's a staged house. And the contestants help. Wait, check guys. I thought, guys, yeah, this is what's called. 80% of Pimp My Ride is fake. Here's the evidence. Brother, I thought 100% was fake. Yeah. Guys, I'm actually more impressed that there's a part real in this. You're at a house. It's not my house. It's a staged house. And the contestants' houses weren't the only thing Pimp My Ride lied about. The reactions were staged and retaken multiple times. Certain upgrades were taken off as soon as the cameras cut. It's for a boat. He goes, it's a GPS for waterways. It will not work in your car. And disappointingly, even Exhibit himself had no real interest in cars. Soccer moms coming up to me, telling me about their husband and their car that he had since the 60s. And I was like, Stop talking to me about this. I know as much as you do. When asked if the show was fake, a former contestant replied with a single word correct, which isn't surprising as the show even lied about who the contestants were. For example, in season two, episode 10, Brooke was introduced as a 22 year old guys, film lover guys, working hard to go to grad. Why would you put your real name on this? That's fine. Guys, guys, they would go up to their house and they were like, oh yeah, guys, this is my car. I live here. It's a shit. It's like, it looks like a crack house. The car was full of fucking cigarette butts and there was rats in it. Like, bro, I don't want my name on this shit either, man. Like, what the fuck? Red School, which had been fabricated by the producers as she was actually a 25-year-old cocktail waitress yeah. planning to move back to New York. The reason for this, as explained by Jake from season three, was because Pin My Ride only picked people in their early 20s. There was a strict age limit of 22 years old. Confirming that the show was lying about contestants' details before filming had even started. That's in the first out. 30 seconds of each episode, Exhibit emphasizes that each contestant doesn't know they're about to get picked. He has no idea. I'm about to pimp his ride. Yet this was strange as the contestant always answered the door, always had a microphone on them, and even had their windows blacked out as if they didn't want cameras seeing inside. Well, it turns out Brooke, the supposed 22-year-old film lover, had been pre-selected by a friend to appear on the show, and as a result, she'd state, when Exhibit showed up at my house to tell me I'd been chosen, not a surprise. What was a surprise was when the producers made yes. me react and react yes. and then react again. None of the people cared about chat. They see what they're doing with the car and show that nobody gives nobody give guys I, guys, sometimes I would literally skip the fucking intro and sh I would I didn't care at all. Again to exhibit showing up, finally coercing me into doing a cartwheel, and she wasn't the only contestant who'd had this experience. And they push you on how to say it and what to say and everything like that. The show Is didn't have an snake, actual script, but they did steer the dialogue in a direction that they wanted. If I said something they liked, they would have me repeat it over and over on camera. This had been commented by Seth, who appeared in season five, who was also well aware that Exhibit was coming to his house, stating. They told me I was in the running for my own episode, but it was between me and two other people. When I was sitting in the house waiting for a knock at the door, they said that it was either going to be Exhibit or a producer telling me I didn't win. Thinking back on it, that was all bullshit, but it did make the surprise genuine, which was the same experience as Erin from season four, episode two. She was one of three contestants. One of them would be chosen. Someone came and knocked at the door. If it was Exhibit, they won. Each contestant was at least somewhat aware that they'd be getting a knock on the door because, well, the homes they were in were actually owned by Pimp My Ride. A Huffington Post article clarified, these houses were oftentimes not the contestants' homes. Instead, each dwelling had been rented by MTV. For example, when Jake from <laughs> season three was asked, did the film crew show up and stage the whole surprise as part of the episode? He'd I respond mean, by st I mean, Chad, yeah, logistically, Chad, imagine, imagine you find a really good contestant, really good age, really, you scout them out, and they don't have a house. They live in an apartment. Okay, GG. Okay, you find another, another good, oh, he lives with his mom. Okay, GG. Like, this just makes it logistically sound. It wasn't my house. It was a place owned by one of the crew members. Similarly, Seth from season five stated, the house was rented from Craigslist because I lived in an apartment and they need a house with a big open driveway for filming, which is certainly reasonable. Although sometimes the house was part of the person's story. In season two, for example, Eric's car had supposedly been beat up in the rough streets of Compton. In Compton, ain't no street lights in Compton. <laughs> However, judging from a quick look at Google Maps, it seems the episode was filmed in a much nicer neighborhood. So if Eric's story was inconsistent and Brooke's story from earlier was downright fabricated, then who else's stories were exaggerated for the sake of the show? Well, it seems pretty much years later and shit the bed. I know, I know. Much all of them. In season three, Jake's Buick had been bought from his grandma who smoked, and as a result, the show threw an extra few dozen cigarette butts in the car to make her just look like a totally disgusting person. On top of this, the show interviewed Jake's girlfriend toward the start of the episode, yet MTV apparently 
questioned me having a girlfriend and suggested I dump her because it was better for my desperate dude with a shit car image. A producer later responded by stating, why would we want a kid to break up with his girlfriend? How would that have helped the show? So while Jake's claim about his girlfriend was somewhat questionable, the cigarette story was confirmed by Seth who had a similar experience. Yeah. Cringe, cringe. This is the, but they probably would just want like some fucking, this is like some, oh guys, things went like this. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, they fake everything and you tell me that they wouldn't be able to fake that he doesn't have a girlfriend for like fucking 30 minutes? Relax, bro. Relax. Nobody asked him to do that. that I know I'm fat, but they went the Brain extra dead. mile to make me look extra fat by telling the world that I kept candy all over my seat and floor just in case I got hungry. However, it seems the faker story was Justin's in season six. His front bumper had supposedly fallen off in a car crash. Here is a result of a three car pile of right here. Although according to a 2010 tweet, my friend Justin was on Pimp My Ride. On TV, he said his RAV4 was involved in a three car crash. No, it wasn't. Dude beat his car up with a bat. The same user then clarified, what he told me was that MTV suggested to him that he and his friend should do more damage to the car, which was confirmed by Justin himself who'd add, yes, they removed my front bumper, used aircraft remover and enhanced the dent on the side of my car. Whilst introducing the episode, Justin stated, one of my crazy ex-girlfriends actually threw nail polish on my hood. Although when he was asked, why are all your ex-girlfriends so angry? Justin revealed it was just something I made up, while Aaron from season four was also encouraged to make well, her so he made it as a contestant, then. They asked to leave trash in the car, wait, wait, wait. in and out. Wait, wait, that's the contestant who made it up? I mean, dude, what, what can you do, man? Like, and so they told me to leave it in the cup holder, so I did. It seems the only real part of the show's intro was Exhibit's improvised dialogue. Because it wasn't scripted. Mm -hmm. I could say whatever I want to say. And when Exhibit drove the car to the shop, yeah, Exhibit though. did actually take the cars and drive them away, with the exception of a few that were too broken down, and then they made it look like he did. Although this segment created even more problems. Most people believe that Pamar takes the car and gives it back in like a week or something. That's what I thought was gonna happen too. But in actuality, they took my car for roughly seven months, being a massive inconvenience for some of the show's contestants. And they make it look like they're moving really, really fast, but in reality, they weren't. When asked for the five months they had your car, did they supply you with a replacement car? Justin from season six replied, no, they gave me $2,000 to rent a car. But I was 19 at the time. I rented a car for a month and it cost me $1,000, forcing Justin to find his own transport for the remaining four months. Seth from season five had a similar experience, being forced to go to a really small shady company off the freeway by LAX because they were the only ones willing to rent to me because of my age. It sucked having that rental car because they wouldn't take payments over the phone, so once a month I had to drive all the way from West Covina to LAX just for them to swipe my car. Although the rental situation was better for other contestants. They had my car for about six months, and that time I had the rental car for six months as well. With Jake from season three adding, they gave me a really nice Mitsubishi Lancer to drive for the time they had the Buick. In the meantime- but I don't think they lied about this. Also, they signed up for this. Because I, I, yes, it's not like, like corporate greed and shit like that, but at the same time, guys, they, they, they signed up for this and they accepted the deal and how it, how it was going to go about, right? And it, it I mean... And the crew began to plan how the rides were going to be pimped, although what according to a former here? production staffer, this was also somewhat staged. The boardroom scenes with the WCC crew took a long time to shoot. They often had to be fed line by line. Some of those fuck guys never check, really got used check, to being on check, TV. You, Some of the check. lines in the shop probably seem rehearsed because producers would come up with them and feed them to the WCC guys. Although excluding this, yeah, the mechanics were fed. I'm defending it, okay? But if, it, if somebody says, yo, dude, we're going to pimp Tom. your ride and uh, you're going to get 2K, uh, if there's a contract that you give you, you 2k, right, for you to rent the car, and you accept it, you're like, guys, this 2k wasn't enough. Okay, well, at that point, I mean, shit, you should, you should probably not accept it or sign this fucking deal if you didn't want it. If it was inconvenient, you probably shouldn't have fucking signed it. What the fuck? Fairly innocent. The segment where they'd pimp the car was almost impossible to fake. They really did put shit in the vehicles and change everything out. But when contestants were shown what their new car looked like, Pimp My Ride employed even more staging. Finally came the day for the big reveal. They filmed my reaction to the car at least 10 times before I'd even seen it. And when I did, holy hell, poor Betsy looked like Barbie's dream car from hell. It was pimped to the nines and hideous. This had been written by Brooke, who gave a much different reaction during her episode. Beautiful, perfect. 
color. Exactly, exactly the color I want. While every other contestant also filmed their reveal multiple different times. We had to take a lot of takes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Justin stated they had to keep retaking my reaction. Seth stated I even had to do the reveal of the car like three times. However, Jake's reaction anecdote was the strangest of them all. His first real reaction to the car was just quiet amazement where he said this is good. They immediately yelled redo and then things got a bit weirder. I remember this very clearly. Big Dane, very big dude. He like puts his arm around my shoulder, kind of walks me around the shop for like 10 minutes and he's like, listen, we put a lot of work into this. We expect you to be a little more enthusiastic, although it would have been hard to conjure enthusiasm for a car that barely worked. As Jake would later write, the problem with the show is they don't fix any of the mechanical issues and my car was a piece of shit. What they did was make my piece of shit sound exceptionally awesome, which is great, just not great enough to drive on roads. The HuffPost article expanded on this by stating, the car needed a muffler and so a fake exhaust pipe was installed to make it seem as if that's what the car was supposed to sound like, even though it was just a lack of a muffler, <laughs> while Exhibit brought up a much more dangerous incident. There was an instance where one of the cars wasn't fixed correctly and long story short, this kid was driving this vehicle that was supposed to be like damn near brand new and the steering wheel came off when he was driving it. It's therefore no surprise that the production staff has said, I can say that the cars often weren't fully ready when we shot the reveal. Some had to stay in the shop another week or so to get finished before the kids got them back, especially if they had mechanical issues and it was Seth and his candy bars who seemed to fit what this category. Pimurai doubled down on his supposedly crappy diet by installing a cotton candy machine in the boot of the car, which didn't even work as the cotton candy machine didn't have a protective hood that fit. So if I tried turning it on, it would get candy strands everywhere. Very messy, so I never used it again after the shoot. Seth also never used the LED lights installed in the seats as they would get really hot if left on, while he also had to remove the goal with- What the fuck? I mean, that, that, that's a free car heater, a seat heater. Uh, guys, guys, he, guys, he didn't even read the fine print. It's a two-in-one seat warmer, dude. What? This guy's just doors dumb. Because the pistons used to lift them kept them from putting seatbelts in the back, which was highly dangerous. To add a cherry on top of the cake, he had to fork out a further $1,700 for a brand new engine, then adding, after that I drove it for a month before someone hit me and totaled it. However, the end to Justin's RAV4 was even more brutal. Oh. After five years of taking his pimped out ride to car shows, Justin's RAV4 caught on fire whilst driving as a result of faulty wires. It was later confirmed that this had nothing to do with the show and at least Justin's car was the same one he first sent in as when Tavrish uploaded a video titled I bought an abandoned pimp my ride minivan he'd make a shocking discovery. The show originally introduced the minivan as a 1998 Plymouth Grand Voyager however Tavrish discovered the car was now a 1999 Dodge Caravan showing that after they wrecked the original minivan the show sneakily pimped a completely different car. As a result Exhibit has been the brunt of most of the show's backlash. I was the face of the show you know what I'm saying? So people associate I me mean, with dude, what- Dude, 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 imagine dude, you spend this entire thing. Guys, find a contestant, a story, a car. Dude, you film the whole thing, you know, and then you remove something, the car doesn't work anymore. Bro, what can you do, man? Dude, what do you do at that point? It's GG, like, happened to the car. Scrap which the feels pretty thing. unfair given every contestant has said he's an awesome guy. In fact, Exhibit only did pimp my ride for the following reason. I actually did pimp my ride because I thought they was going to play my music videos. However, it instead seemed to have the opposite effect. The show was taking away my credibility of wow. what I've already done. It was taking so much time I wasn't able to tour, I wasn't able to record albums. Oh, damn, I definitely I, didn't know. I was, was you know, I was there filming, 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 filming. Which is even more depressing given he was barely paid for it. But at that particular time, you wasn't really happy with the pay though. Nah. <laughs> and as a result, it's no surprise so that Pimp My Ride is unlikely to make a comeback. When are we gonna get a Pimp no, My Ride? No, no, there'll be no more Pimp My Ride. Yeah, it sounds like a logistical fucking nightmare of a thing to do.